Has Liam Neeson made enough of these movies yet to just have it be its own subgenre? Liam Neeson kicks ass in blank. So memory tells the story of a contract killer suffering from Alzheimer's who is trying to avenge the murder of a young girl. What is up everybody? Well the newest movie out this weekend is another Liam Neeson action thriller. Now I'm somebody who has pretty much given up on Liam Neeson and his action thriller career. I've seen probably five or six of the 47,000 of these things that he has made since Taken. And at least for the ones that I have seen, they have begun to be progressively more generic, progressively more formulaic. And so on paper, I had no interest in seeing this movie until I noticed that the great Martin Campbell was directing this. Martin Campbell's the guy that brought us Goldeneye, Casino Royale, Mask of Zorro, Edge of Darkness. He's given us a lot of great action movies and a lot of great action thrillers. And so that one name gave me enough hope to go and give this thing a shot. Unfortunately, it appears that either Martin Campbell or Liam Neeson or the both of them just wanted to pay off some credit card debt because there is nothing noteworthy about this movie. Starting off with the positives of memory, I will say that Liam Neeson is still really good in this type of movie. Like there's a reason why he has done so many and why people have continuously gone out to support these, probably in smaller amounts. Those people that like action movies and like action thrillers, there is a dedicated fan base that have continued to allow Liam Neeson to pump out these movies for well over a decade now. And he is easily the best part about this movie, playing this badass contract killer. And no matter how old Liam Neeson gets, he still pulls off the badass part. He's like breaking people's necks and fucking cutting into their throats with a garrote wire and shooting people and having these little hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, very similar to Taken, that still pack a lot of punch, that still are, are fight scenes that you can feel. They're visceral. And so his side of this story as this contract killer that has a moral compass despite being a bad guy and is suffering from Alzheimer's and doesn't quite know at all times what he has done or what his allegiances are, that side of the story is actually pretty good because of Liam Neeson. Listen to me very carefully. The girl stays alive. You're answerable to me. And the initial concept of a contract killer that's suffering from Alzheimer's that doesn't exactly know if he has killed somebody or if he hasn't, he doesn't exactly know if he's going to know what the hell he is doing whenever he goes to follow through with this plan that he has. He has to leave breadcrumbs for himself. He has to write things on his arm to remember, very similar to like Memento and oddly enough, Guy Pierce is in this movie. Those elements are creative enough to make a movie like this stand out amongst a subgenre that is quite honestly overstuffed, especially one starring Liam Neeson. Unfortunately, the execution of this is just painfully generic. It is mediocre. It is vanilla. There is nothing about the script, about the way that it is directed, about the way that the movie is laid out and paced and edited that makes this worthwhile of seeing. It's just anything in this subgenre that you have seen before, just switched around a little bit with a new name. The movie is almost a movie of two entirely different storylines, where you have Liam Neeson as this contract killer with Alzheimer's, with this mission to avenge this girl that got murdered by somebody, and he's just going one by one and picking these people off before he loses his mind and essentially dies. And then you have the Guy Pierce side of the storyline, where he's this FBI investigator, and he's trying to investigate all of these different victims, these hits that Liam Neeson has done, while also trying to figure out what is going on, the truth of how this girl was killed. And there is two completely different tones, two completely different styles of pacing, and two completely different levels of quality as far as acting ability in these two halves. I've already talked about how great Liam Neeson is, so obviously he's not the problem. Guy Pearce is a great actor. He does everything that he can with this, but everybody else surrounding Guy Pearce pretty much really drags this movie down, with the exception of Ray Stevenson. He's still pretty good. I just love that guy. But everybody that is tied with Guy Pearce's storyline, all of his side deputies or his co-workers, whatever the hell you want to call them, they're the most generic cop characters I think I have ever seen. You have one girl that's like the quippy one that tries to say things that are like a little rough around the edges, doesn't really land. It feels like she's acting the entire movie. And then you have this other guy played by Harold Therese who is like the little bit more off the edge, a little bit more uh, violent, a little more explosive of the other cop characters, the one that you feel like could probably go off the handle a little bit here and there. His character never worked 
at any point in this movie. And I don't know if I was crazy, but it looked like they were overdubbing his lines the entire movie because the cadence and the voice just never matched his face. And so you take that and then you match it with his acting or the writing or a combination of both and his character just took me out of the experience every single time they focused on him. And all the other characters that Guy Pearce and them interact with, like the mayor or this other investigator, it's just all the most generic shit that you have ever seen within this subgenre to the point where I'm like, fuck, get back to Liam Neeson. Just let me watch him fuck people up for the next hour and I'll at least walk away satisfied. They never really clearly establish a villain in this movie, somebody that we should root against. Like there's people who have clearly done bad things, but the way that their allegiance to the bad side is revealed is very clunky. The way that they introduce villains that are just taken out so haphazardly to where it feels like, okay, were they even a threat? Were they even supposed to be like a main villain or a main focus in this movie? It's just so scattered. It's so scatterbrained that it really felt like two completely different movies that were just kind of jammed together and they just don't work as a cohesive unit. Very simple formula. Give Liam Neeson a reason to fuck people up. Give somebody that we want to see him fuck up by the end of the movie and then let him go. There's a formula to it, a very simple formula. Despite the fact that the action that we do get in this movie, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, the shootouts and everything that we do get in this are done well. I mean, Martin Campbell knows how to film action there's just not enough of it. It feels like it's all in the first half of the movie and the rest of it is all just talking. And I'm sorry, this script is just not good enough to have that type of film, to, to have that type of, of a pacing structure. This is the type of script that you wanna cover up with a lot of explosions and shootouts and a lot of blood. And to wrap this thing all up with a nice little shit stained bow, I did not like the ending of this movie at all on many different levels. I feel like every single, conclusion that they came to for each individual character was like the most least satisfying conclusion, least satisfying climax for their character arcs. And there's this attempt to do something, I don't even want to call it like a twist, like a, not even a reveal. It's so fucking obvious. It is so telegraphed because of this one character's performance throughout the entire movie that as soon as I saw him, I'm like, they better not try to pull some bullshit with this character. Like that's going to be surprising at all. And they did. <laughs> That's the note you're gonna leave me walking out in the theater is no shit. Wow. So overall, guys, this movie is not horrible, but of the Liam Neeson action thrillers that I have bothered to watch, this is the one that I'm least satisfied with. And it's easily the worst movie that I have seen from Martin Campbell. And yes, I will put that below Green Lantern. So if you love Liam Neeson's action thrillers, you get a lot of guilty pleasure out of them. Maybe check this thing out, but definitely don't rush to see it and spend a bunch of money in the theaters. But for everybody else, I'm gonna have to recommend that you skip it. All right, guys, thank you for checking out my review. If you enjoyed this, I'm gonna put a playlist right over here for all of the other new releases that I have reviewed in the year of 2022. If you love action movies, I also have a top 50 video where I go over all of my favorite action movies of all time. Please like and share this video, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.